I'm going to show you how to configure DNS failover quickly and easily. First, we need to build a failover pool. We'll click on Failover Pools and click to add a new one. The name is just for your reference, so set it to anything you'd like. The method determines whether all IPs will be given out or just the lowest priority one. So because my example today will be for a disaster recovery implementation of active standby, I'll choose sequential. We only want one IP address to be given out at a time. The backup IP is the IP of last resort. So if all IPs that I configure in the pool are unresponsive and go down, this IP will be given out. The monitor can be one of our built-in ones or a custom one you create. The alert and list are there to send you text messages or emails when pool members become unresponsive. And lastly, the fail after value is the number of our global monitoring nodes that must agree to determine if a device is up or down. The higher the number, the more reliable the monitoring will be. The lower it is, the quicker it might fail over, but you might get some false positives. Now that we've created the pool, you'll see it in the table. We still need to add the device IPs to it, so we'll click to expand it, and then click to add an entry. These are the actual devices that we will both monitor and, when online, give the IPs for in DNS. So I'll give my first device a name, enter the IP address, and make it active. You can use this active toggle later if you ever need to take it offline for maintenance, for example, to force a failover. The auto rejoin allows for an IP to immediately return to DNS if the device comes back up after being down. If you don't want that, for example, maybe a database needs to be synchronized before you can fail back, then you should leave this unchecked. Enable monitoring means we'll perform health checks. If you do not check this, then the device will always be considered up and available. Here, I'll let it inherit the monitor I selected earlier for the pool, but I could uncheck that and select a custom monitor for every single device. For the alerts, I'll do the same thing. I'll use the list I chose earlier in the pool-wide setting, and I'll check to receive both up and down notifications. So you see the device in the list now, and it's currently being checked to determine the current status. As soon as it's online, it will be ready for use. So it's very important to wait for a minute or two to confirm the status, just in case it goes down and you need to tweak the monitor a little bit. So assuming everything goes well, I'll head back to the Domains tab, expand our domain, select the A record we want to control with a failover pool, and modify it from using a hard-coded IP to using the failover pool we just created. And that's it. Now when a query comes in for this record, the IP from the failover pool will be given out. And when the IP fails a monitoring check from five of our global test points, the backup IP will be given out. Hopefully that's enough to get you started. Check out our knowledge base for further assistance or reach out to our support team at any time.